Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be covering a leader that I often forget about but I'm always surprised when I play him, Montezuma and the Aztecs. Before delving into the strategy with Monty, I really want to thank everyone for the support that I'm getting on these leader guide series. It's really helping me grow. I've gained about two to three hundred subscribers in the past two months and that's really getting me close to my 1000 subscriber goal that I hit by the end of the year. If you like this, please remember to leave me a like and let me know what content you want to see in the future on the channel. Also, I'm thinking about setting up some uh, supporter content on the channel. Let me know what you think about that in the comments down below. The Aztecs are a very flavorful sieve that I tend to overlook because they kind of seem bland on paper, but they're anything but bland. I'm going to do this episode a little bit differently. Normally I start with the sieve ability or the leader ability, but this time I'm going to start with the Aztec unique unit because to me, the Eagle Warrior is really what pulls the Aztecs together. The Eagle Warrior is a warrior replacement that you get from turn 1 that gives you era score from the start of the game. They cost no maintenance and have 28 combat strength, which makes them a swordsman equivalent. They cost more production, but whenever you kill a city state or a civ unit, not barbarians or they'd be busted, you have a chance to turn that unit into a builder. And this is huge, and it does synergize with your other abilities. People tend to underhype this and say things like, oh, I don't get enough builders for this to be good, but you're looking at it wrong. An Eagle Warrior costs 25 extra production. Your first builder costs 50 production. If you get one builder from building two warriors, they've paid for themselves. But you won't just get one builder. If you're warring city-states and killing their warriors like you should be, and then making peace until they build more warriors and then killing those warriors like the Aztec historical flower wars, you'll probably get three to four builders before turn 40. If you get four builders, that's over 200 production, and they don't increase your other builders' costs like you would if you just built those builders or purchased those builders. This is huge. It hyper accelerates you into the game, and you don't need to get 10 builders for this to be great, even though, you know, 10 builders would be great. Three or four builders is enough to shoot you forward over the AI. This synergizes with their civ ability, Legend of the Five Sons. Builders can use a charge to complete 20% of the district's production cost. Very similar to the Chinese bonus, but theirs is towards wonders. I feel like getting production towards districts is much more strategic and flexible than getting production towards wonders. You have a unit that gets you builders, and you can look at this in a couple of ways. You can use your captured builders to rush out districts, such as holy sites, or campuses to get your profits or early great scientists, or you can use those captured builders to improve your resources and build builders to build districts. Either way, you're getting extra use out of your production. Getting early districts out without having to actually produce them is very strong. You can get your holy site and get units or settlers at the same time, and it helps accelerate you. And since Civ is a snowball game, this really matters. Montezuma's ability also synergizes with the Eagle Warrior and Builders. Gifts for the Tlatuani allows your resources to your luxury resources to provide amenities to two extra cities. So it spreads to six cities instead of four. And this is okay, but it's not that huge. Most importantly is your units get plus one combat strength for each different luxury that you've improved inside of your territory. This affects all units, including your Eagle Warriors, allowing you to farm city-states far longer in the future so you can get your districts and your resources up and it also applies to things like prophets or not prophets apostles and missionaries all of this lines up together to push you into a huge early game war and development spike finally the aztecs have the tlacli an arena replacement that gives you two amenities two faith two culture and one great general point per turn now this is okay and it helps your cities get ecstatic before your amenities spread even further and it's not something to spam everywhere but it does help accelerate you even further into the game monty's fun but I don't really view him as the full-on domination civ that I think most people on Reddit and online do. I don't view the Eagle Warriors as something that you have to be farming the entire game to be good. When I play the Aztecs, I build an Eagle Warrior first instead of building a scout. I find my nearest city-state and with my two Eagle Warriors, I take out their starting warriors, hopefully getting a builder, or stealing a builder from the city-state. 
I make peace and I find another city state and I do the exact same thing. My first city should be building a settler after they build their eagle warrior, and I'll go back to building another eagle warrior after that. I make a loop of those nearby city states and farm them until they get crossbows and it makes me stop. I hope at that point that I've gotten three or four builders, and that's not uncommon. At that point, I just use this accelerated builder growth to either rush out some holy site or my campus, or expand and improve all of my territory. I don't really keep warring unless I need space to expand. If I'm playing with game modes on, I go for vampires to get very good castle sites, or I go for void singers and lean into the faith. If I have heroes, I hope I get Maui. If I have Maui, I can get extra luxury resources and I can absolutely steamroll the game with domination. Otherwise, I'm just expanding out, getting my districts quickly, and using those couple of free extra builders to really slingshot me over other civs at this time. One thing with the Aztecs is I tend to get an early Dark Age, even with a bonus era score from your Eagle Warriors. That's because I don't build scouts. I usually get most of my era score in other games from scouting, but with Aztecs I tend to build warriors and districts instead of scouts. So that'll lead to a classical Dark Age, and hopefully a medieval heroic age. And a medieval heroic age into monumentality, free inquiry, and other things can really, really, really boost you so hard throughout the game. With the Aztecs, I think the best victory condition is actually science. You get crazy early campuses with those builders being rushed into it. You get really early production, which is important for a science game. You can reasonably get those early game great scientists, and those are really important. I think you should war early to get early builders as long as your warriors keep up, and you use those builders to spread out and develop all the way to space. You also get ecstatic cities pretty easily with your Tlaxley and your amenity spreading even further, which means more science, so it works out really well. 8 out of 10. Religion is also good. Your improved resources also help with your religious units. So you get some strong units late game and you can get really fast holy sites consistently in all cities giving you a decent amount of faith and your Tlachtli also gives faith. You don't get a profit bonus however so that's 7 out of 10. Domination is strong as well, but I don't think it's the strongest. You can get crazy amounts of combat strength, but it comes after you have already dominated different continents, because remember each continent only gets four different improved luxury resources. You don't get a long lasting unique unit, and you don't get any bonuses towards extended warfare. So I think you're supposed to war early, farm up your builders, and then you stop. However, if you roll Maui, you can get bonus strength pretty much exponentially throughout the game, and that's fun. 7 out of 10. Culture and Diplomacy are next. I don't see any reason why you would do this. You get no bonuses towards tourism or building wonders. You do get your district fact faster, but you don't get any bonuses towards gold or production beyond that. So both of these are 4 out of 10. I like the Aztecs, but I often don't think about them when I think of the game. It's because their bonuses seem innocuous, but they are actually really well themed. You want to do flower wars, farm up your builders as long as you can with your eagle warriors and make peace. You want to develop with those builders after that, and think of other ways to win the game, either through space, with quickly built campuses, or with religion through quickly built holy sites. They aren't overpowered like they used to be, but they are very strong and can generally do well all the time. They're a B plus sieve. Try them out and let me know what you think about them in the comments down below. Goodbye.